Good evening. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Music Scrap the Musical Scrapper. I am recording my 19 or 19 2013 Streamathon project for the third time. On New Year's Eve, <laughs> the record button didn't click and I didn't notice until I was like three quarters of the way through my stream. So most of what I wanted to record wasn't even recorded. So then the next night I streamed and made this box version only to discover at the end that only the audio recorded. So I am doing it a third time. So my project is a desk calendar organizer. If you go to my blog, www.themusicalscrapper.blogspot.com or not www, sorry, http slash slash themusicalscrapper.blogspot.com uh, you will be able to for free download this um, pattern. It has pictures. Now there are two ways to put on the pattern paper. Um, in my first version, which is not recorded, um, which is the version in my pattern, all right, is like this first version where I put the paper over the top of the project, all right, to cover up the uh, chipboard edges, okay? But in this other project, this version and the version I'm going to record tonight, I just put the pattern paper to the top of the box and then I used um, I inked the edges but then the pattern paper didn't go on if your box is not perfectly square your pattern paper on the outside can go a little wonky and mine did so I just put some uh, cloth tape it's not washi tape it's cloth tape uh, seven gypsies I think maybe um, on the top okay to cover my chipboard edge and the fact that the pattern paper is not quite straight all right, so now this project was won on New Year's Eve by Miss Pris, Linda. And so this will be mailed out to her. But um, I'll see if the one I make to today works out even better than I'll send her that one instead. So it should go in the mail on the weekend. Or Monday, actually, it'll go out. <coughs> Let's see who else is here. Hey, Erica. I hope the third time is lucky, too. I have a couple people here with me watching as I record, so um, we'll see how this one goes. Now, I have pre-made part of this project um, because these side boxes that hold the post-it notes are made exactly the same way as the larger box so I have made those ahead of time because you don't need to see me making four boxes that are the same all right um, I have already printed out there is a pattern for the calendar as well a PDF it's all on one sheet so you can cut it trim it and I'm going to show you how to glue it at the top so that you can tear off each layer each month as it goes by so one end holds the one and a one and five eighths by one and five eighths uh, sticky note. You can put another of the little ones, or you can put these tab ones in here. And then the front pocket or back pocket, whichever you want to be front and back of your thing. Of course, I, they keep falling out because I'm tipping it over. Um, the front holds a three by three sticky note pad. Okay, so, so I have the three boxes pre-made. Now, so for this version, I had to use different paper because huh, I didn't have any more of the this paper in my paper pack. It's the same from, from the same paper line, though. So the paper line I'm using is, oh, hold on, let me get it from underneath my cutter without having everything go flying on me. The paper line is by Recollections, and it's called Memories Documented. It's very nice paper. 
So now recollections always, uh, often, I shouldn't say always, often reprints other lines once the other line is not um, printed anymore. So I don't know if this is a line that they've redone. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's yummy papers. Very vintagey, some glossy, all browns and creams. I've already used, there were quite a few pages of um, Project Life Size um, cards and stuff, so those have already been cut out and used. All right, but then there are these strips. Anyway, so that is the paper pack I'm using. And for this project, uh, this time I'm using this one that has the type words. So it's a chocolate background with ivory typing. Hey, Lana. Nice to see you. Hi, Dixie. Oh, you're taking your son on a long walk? Cool. <laughs> and then this polka dot it one. So on the little boxes, I put the polka dot on the outside and the type on the inside. But for the big box, the type is going to go on the outside and the polka dot on the inside. All right. So in the just a couple of things before I get started, I'm also using to edge my um, paper. I'm using the Gathered Twigs Distress Ink. Sorry, try and get it close enough so it'll... Eh. Anyway, gather twigs. Okay. And to ink my edges, I use a piece of a kitchen sponge. Um, I don't like you to use my finger daubers on projects that are, are uh, chipboard, that I have to edge chipboard, because it really eats up your sponges and I'd rather just use a, a, a kitchen sponge for something that's just going to get eaten up than my good finger daubers. I use my finger daubers for my cards and stuff. Okay, so those are the little ones done. Here is the calendar printed off and I have it clipped so that it's nice and tight and I'm going to show you how to add the glue. I'm going to do that first. Now, in this project, if you typed this off earlier, if you printed it off earlier, um, on I found uh, something that was left out when I was making it on New Year's Eve, or prepping for New Year's Eve, so I did fix it on my blog, so you'll want to go back. The only page where the error was, well, there was a numbering error on the first page, so I fixed that, but then there was, um, it was here where there were some instructions left out scoring instructions were left out on this second to last page so if you've already printed it you can reprint the second to last page and if you really care about the numbering lineup issue you can go and uh, there's a numbering issue I fixed that also all right so let's get started hey Jonna or is that Darcy fooling us again Oh no, Dixie, what? <gasps> oh no, Dixie. Oh, that's horrible. <gasps> oh dear. Okay, so the first thing you'll want to do um, is to glue your calendar. So the way I do it, my the top of my calendar is glued. Okay, it's put on with the magnet. Top of the calendar is glued, so as each month goes by, you can just tear it off carefully. And, um, oh gosh, do I have any more magnet? Oh, I do somewhere. I know. Anyway, worst comes to worst, I'll just, I know I've got magnet somewhere. I forgot to get it. All right, so, anyway, so you take it. Get it all lined up at the top. Okay, so make sure your tops are all lined up close. Get your binder clips on. And I'm going to use, you can use uh, glossy accents. I'm going to use uh, Scotch Quick Dry. 
and you want to put a few layers on you don't have to let it dry in between layers but you want to put a few layers on to make sure that you get a good dang it it never usually I usually keep it up on its end and it doesn't usually clog but of course just because I'm recording and I'm on TV or on TV on live it's gonna anyway I got it going all right so you want to put a few layers on like I said you don't have to let it dry in between layers but you just want to make sure that you get all of the pages connected so I put a drop on rubbed it I'm going to put more on and rub it Well, Dixie, no, labs aren't quite the guard dog that a shepherd is, but he might, he, he, he might lick an attacker to death. <laughs> now, the reason I use magnet is so that you can reuse it another year and just add a next year's calendar. Okay. So has Darcy gone home yet, Jonna? It's so fun seeing your mom. I don't know if your mom is still there either. Okay, so I'll put a few layers and now I'll set that aside to dry. Now I'm gonna take baby wipe and just go along the front edge so you don't have globs hanging out on the edge there. I've already pre-inked around the edges. Doesn't matter about the back so much. Okay, so once that goes clear, you'll know it's dry. All right, I'm going to put that right over here. Oh, gosh, I almost forgot. Um, where are my other little... Hold on, I've got more clips here somewhere. Where'd they go? Hello. Come on, really? There's one. Once you get your glue on, just put it down just enough. Your glue might stick to your binder clip, but if you're careful when you're taking it apart, it'll come off. So you don't want to push your binder clips all the way down because they will glue to your, they will stick to your glue. Just want to keep it nice and tight there. Okay, now we're all ready. Okay. Hey, Dee Dee. Hi, Eileen. Oh, Darcy just left, did she? Oh. Okay. Get the glue off my fingers so I don't get it everywhere. Okay, so let's get going. So now we have to make the large box because I've got the small boxes. All right, so I've got my paper and I've got my chipboard. Now, when you're using chipboard on a project with your cutter, okay, you do not let me move this out of the way. Don't use your good blade. Always keep an old blade. And I mark it with a piece of tape so I know which one is my chipboard blade. All right, now I need my pattern jean. So, on your pattern, if you hold your 6 by 12 piece of chipboard, the same way as the pattern you're going to score it using your cutter but you're not going to cut it all the way through okay 
You're going to score it by drawing your blade across the chipboard once. Hi, Barb. Nice to see you. And so on the 12 inch side, you're going to score at four, at six, and at 10. At four, at six, and at 10. So I'm going to score at four, at six, oops, I've got some shadows here because my overhead lights are not on very well, four and at six and at ten. Okay, so there's my four, my six, and my ten. Now I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm going to score it at four inches. So I turned it counterclockwise. All right. So now you can see your cardboard will fold, but it's not cut. Your chipboard, excuse me, will fold, but it is not cut all the way through. It's only cut through all except for the paper layer on the inside. Now, this is what's important to remember when you're li so you don't put your lining on the wrong side. Oh, yeah. Yes, Ralph liked his book a lot, Kathy. He looked at it a few times while he was at the house. So, yeah. So, he, he did like it. Thank you. Yep. So... The inside of your box, all right, is the side where you're not scored through. So that's the inside. The outside of your box is the side that has the scores. Now, the only part you need from this section, okay, is this four inch section. This is going to be the bottom. So the part that ends up as the four inches, this is going to be the bottom of your box. Oh, that pen's not working very well. This is going to be the bottom of your box. All right, so all of this section, this 2x2 two two section here, this 2x4 two section here, and this 2x2 two two section, you're going to cut those sections out. But you're going to keep this part because you'll use it as the divider Okay, you'll use it as the divider. Yeah, I knew he would like it. I knew he would like it. I gave him actually a mini scrapbook one year with Christmas pictures in it. And he really liked that. And one year I gave him, the year he won the uh, silver medal at the Canadian Olympics for the baseball team, um, I gave him a shadow box with a picture of his medal and that kind of stuff. So he really liked that. So I knew he would appreciate it. Okay, so all right, get this folded so it's easier to cut. You can use your trimmer to cut this off, but which I usually do, but I'm just going to use my scissors. Just bend it and it'll cut pretty easily through that other paper layer. This part 
card doesn't have to, have to be super neat because it's going to be hidden anyway underneath paper and where you're connecting. So I'm just taking off the worst of the part that got messed up there. Okay. So this part I'm going to keep. Okay. So there is your box. Okay. Now, because I don't want to put this together and then have to measure and get my fingers in here to cover the inside, I'm going to cover the inside before I put it all together. So, double-sided tape. Hi, Carol. Nice to see you. Wait now. Oh, I missed a tip from Eileen. Holy, hold on. Put the tip of the pen on your tongue for a second. The acid in your saliva will make the ink flow again. Oh, well, yeah, I, you know what? I, I usually just put a little, <clears throat> I don't put it on my tongue. I put spit on my finger and then put the pen. I, I learned that in high school. I just didn't have time to do it. I wasn't going to spit on my finger on camera. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I think one of our teachers in high school taught us that. Probably our science teacher. Mr. Alexander knew everything. That man was a genius. He could multiply five numbers by five numbers in his head. Whew. I tell you. And he used to let us test him. If we would get through our lesson and have any time left at the end, he would let us test him. And give him numbers to multiply. And one of us would have a calculator. And he could figure it out in his head. Before we could type it in on the calculator. To test his answer. Uh oh. Now what's Dee Dee say? And she's laughing at Eileen's. Ah but no, Dee Dee with your white gel pens. It doesn't. With your white gel pens, Dee Dee. What does work is just on your finger. If you just take it and write it on your finger, it warms up the ink and it will get it flowing. Works for me. But maybe you just don't have warm skin, Dee Dee. You might be cold-blooded. Yes, I spit on them, although I don't, uh, I'm just going to put this across here instead of down the sides of it. Now, here's the trick. Because this is the inside of your box, all right, and on each corner, you're taking away some of the thickness, the length of the chipboard, okay, because of the thickness. So even though this chipboard was 12 inches long, okay, you're going to end up with some left when you put your chip, when you put your paper on. However, okay, here's the thing. We're going to use it. You have to be careful when you're putting, you don't want to just put the paper on. Okay, flat, and then close it up. Because what's going to happen is your paper is going to buckle. Because you don't need the same length of paper as your chipboard because you're losing length here in your corners. All right? So what you're going to do is you're going to start at one end. I start at the end that has the bottom. And you're going to connect it to here. And then you're going to tip up your box. Then you're going to connect this section. Then you're going to tip up your box. You're going to connect... And then you're going to connect. Then you will have about a quarter inch of paper left at the end. And I'm going to put score tape on it and it will connect my box on the inside. So it will make the hinge here on this inside corner. Ah, that's what it is. Okay, Dee Dee, bye. Yeah.
this. And I am recording. It is recording, so it says, Phew, it better actually record or I'll scream. Okay, so I have my paper for the inside. It is cut at 12, okay, by 6. I'm not going to need this section here, so I'm actually going to trace here. And cut it out because it's easier than cutting it out after you have it attached. Hee <laughs> hee. Discovered that the hard way. Ooh. And because I can't cut straight with scissors if my life depended on it, I'm gonna use my trimmer. Put my good blade in. Yeah. This is two inches, so I can use my ruler on my cutter here. Line it up. There's a little line here since my wire is gone. I can line it up there with my blade. And two inches this way. remember if we need that oh yes I use that for the divider on the inside okay so make sure that you've done that and measured it on the inside so you don't mess up your paper because this is going on the inside now when I'm doing this you can use wet glue for this you do not have to use double-sided tape with wet glue, you get a little bit more chance to move it a little bit. So, um, you might find it easier with wet glue. But when I what I do is, I just take my score tape back as far as I'm going to. So that if I accidentally drop my paper, it's not going to stick where I don't want it to stick. So I only tear it back as far as I'm going here. And I'm going to put a little glue on the inside here. I'm going to glue this section and my next section while I'm there. You don't want to glue too far ahead with your glue stick because it will dry by the time you get there. If you take any length of time at all. Alright, so now notice I'm not taking it off the bottom. I'm going to do that last because I don't want it sticking. Alright, so I'm going to get my corner lined up here. Sorry if my head's in the way. But I want to get it lined up properly. Okay, so I'm going to go down till I get to the fold. Now I'll pull this down to the next score. You watching? Oh, Dee Dee's left. I see Dee Dee left just as I was making my box. Uh huh, uh huh, I noticed that. Ha. Huh. Okay, so you want to fold it as you're laying it down. Okay? So that it doesn't buckle as you're moving. So, I'm going to add my I just think no one's talking, Erica. Chat's not frozen. I guess everybody's working on projects, I hope. Artsy projects are going on. My rambling is just keeping them company. Okay. Uh oh. Hold on. Darn it. Ah, oh, it didn't go straight and I wasn't careful. Dang it. And now it's peeling off. Well, at least it's at the bottom that it's messing up. Darn it. That's okay. I'll, I'll put some glue down there. I'll let it catch. <sighs> Darn it. 
darn it. I wasn't careful enough. So you got to get it into the corner or it's going to go on crooked. And it's still going on crooked. Oh, well. I Tape will probably have to go on the top anyway. Okay. Alrighty. I'm going to have to trim that off because it went a little crooked on me. <clears throat> That's all right. So this part is going to get folded over. And it becomes a hinge to connect the box. All right, so I'm going to put score tape on there. That would be a, an example of when using wet glue would have been easier than score tape because it would have come up better. Oh, cool, Kathy. A sign. Nice. Your bone folder in there but be careful because you don't want to break the uh... there we go all right now I need to take my scissors and trim around the bottom here where it went off kilter on me I didn't get it into the corner properly. But there's always ways to fix. Oh, cool. Theme books and chapter books. What grade does he teach? I thought he taught kindergarten. bright guys all right is it better with the light off hold on is that better without the light is that better without my uh, aunt light on oh he's grade three this year oh I didn't know that oh I thought he was still teaching the wee ones oh, cool It's better without it? Okay. I didn't notice until I looked that how uh, bright it was. Sorry, I'm just trimming off my... I will fix that in a second with my handy dandy sander. It doesn't have to be sanded perfectly because this part is going to be... Um, closed up anyway but I'll just uh, sand it off a little bit there all right now I need to take off the score tape for the bottom oh wait now first I want to make an actually make a fold there hey Lori you've missed uh, let's see 34 minutes just getting the box constructed and stuff and uh, gluing the calendar okay so So there's your basic box with the inside. 
So now I need to put hinges on the outside, of course. Now you have several options for hinges. You can use your basic craft paper with double-sided tape with your hinges. In that case, when I'm making a box, if I'm using craft paper, I cut my craft paper at an inch and a half so that each side of the hinge is three quarters of an inch. And then I use my 5 8 inch score tape, or in this case, miracle tape or magic tape, whatever it is, Viva Las Vegas tape. Um, but the thing about that is, when you use the craft paper hinges, you can see the bumps when you put your um, paper on the outside. And that's always bothered me, so I've been trying to find ways to make hinges that are still strong enough, okay, but that aren't going to show in your pattern paper. So, of course, you could use Tyvek with double-sided tape to make your hinges. But then at findtape.com, when I bought my ATG tape, I found this craft. It was only like four bucks a roll, I think. Four fifty maybe. And there's a lot of feet on here. And what it is, is craft packing tape, boxing tape. So it's that craft tape that they use to uh, close up boxes. I thought, eh, perfect. And it's thin. It's a little stickier than masking tape. Well, actually, no. It's about the same as good quality masking tape. But it has a shinier coating on it. So you could use a good quality one-inch masking tape. That would work. Masking tape is not permanent right away but when you leave it there masking tape becomes a permanent tape just like painters tape if you leave painters tape more than four days on something it becomes permanent all right it does dry and become permanent so this tape will become permanent it what does become permanent so that's what I'm using for my hinges so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hinge up the bottom first to make sure everything goes square Okay, and so what I like to do is come all the, oops, all the way down the side. All right, no, I don't. I'm going to do the bottom first, didn't I say? <laughs> so I'm going to do the bottoms first. So I want to come down over the edge though, so that the corner gets covered. So here's what I'm doing. So, and like I said, my little boxes were made basically the same way. So I want to do my length plus about an inch on either side. And this end didn't end up, I must have ripped it last time. Okay, so I'm going to put it on the bottom first. Half over. Oh, wow, Kathy, that is cool. Hi, Juanita. <laughs> well, it is much harder for me to see. That's for sure. What if I, hold on. What if I just turn this light on? I've got two lights here. Well, that one gives more glare. Hold on. I'm going to turn this. But I'm going to turn it back a little bit and see if that, move it back a little. <sighs> Maybe both of them will help. No, not really. Okay. All right, so here's what I'm doing. Okay. So I have it on the bottom. I'm going to sit it up. I made it too long here. Hold on. <laughs> so you want it just about an inch out past. Each side. Not very good at judging. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't I cut it too long. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down on this side. Okay. And I'm going to put it down on this side. Check for my square. Okay. 
I have to fix this. This edge has to get pushed in a little bit more from the, but that's all right when I do that hinge. Now, here's what I'm going to do before I press it down. I'm going to just trim from there to the corner, from there into the corner. I'm going to take out just a sliver of a wedge there. Not much, because you don't want the corner to be bare on you. So what I'm going to do is fold that in, fold this in, fold that down. Alright, there we go. Alright, so that covers the corners nicely. Okay, now... This is the side where the join where the join is on the inside, so that's why it's being a little bit more annoying here. But that's all right. I want to do the bottom first because then these top edges will come down over. Hold on, this did not join very well at the top. It didn't connect. It's crooked. Darn it! Hold on. Alert the presses. Okay, now do the same thing with your bottom side edges and the long one on this side. So I'm going to do this long one first. Once again, half the tape, put it down the side, down the side. Trim out just a sliver. Okay. Put your short ends in. Now you can't do this when you use the um, craft paper for hinges because you would end up with too much bulk here on the corners because the craft paper is so thick. So then sometimes your corners end up showing. Okay, that's basically straight. Both lights on is better? Okay. Hi Karen, nice to see you. <laughs> what was that? Kathy's being invaded. Kathy's chat. And do your edges the same way. Now, now when you do your side edges, you don't have to bring it down over because your corners are already covered. So you just need to bring it down to the bottom. And I'm going to trim it and then I'll trim it off at the top. So just bring it down to the bottom. quite half. Oops. Hello. There we go. Oh, uh, Karen, this is, I found it at um, finetape.com, but it's called craft box tape or packing tape. So it's that paper tape that they use for making up, putting up boxes. And they have different widths of it. So I got the, I think it's, a, is it an inch and a quarter? Or is it just an inch? No, it's one inch. So it's one inch. And it was only like $4.50 or something for this humongous roll of tape. 
so that's the tape I'm using but if you can use a good quality masking tape because it does become permanent oh I forgot to do the other short edge oops almost messed up there okay so across the bottom down the sides cut it push it in I think we're delayed, but I did answer that, Kathy. Yep. Okay. Now I'll continue with my sides. Now, you have to be careful because unless you use stays on ink, you can't ink this tape because it does have like a shiny surface. So it won't ink like a masking tape will. But I'm pretty sure I haven't. I'm pretty sure stays on would ink, ink it. But uh, this dress ink won't dry on it. Just so you know. But I'm I'm not inking corners. I'm going all the way around the corners with the tape with the paper. So. So I'm lining it up on the bottom. If it's too long, I'll trim it at the top. Getting it as close as I can. Here we go, and one more corner. Yeah. Okay, there we go. And I think I'm going to put another layer on this corner just because it is the corner where they joined. And for some reason, it doesn't seem to have. I'm actually going to put some this way. make sure it's nice and firm and now one more down the outside you just don't want this box a bit of a gap here so I'm just going to put an extra piece of tape I can see the gap when I look inside so I'm just going to see if I can pull it in a little bit there there we go good 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 okay so now the tricky part getting your outside paper on now I've already now just like the inside is less than 12 inches your outside is now more than 12 inches because of the added on the corner so what I did was I have my 12 inches 
of my paper. I just took another inch and a quarter, okay, and I just used um, double-sided tape and I uh, over set it over a quarter of an inch to add an extra inch onto my paper. Now, the one thing you need to be careful of when you're setting your box up is you want to make sure um, that you stay nice and uh, secure with it. So, where do you want it to join? Well, you don't want your paper to join well, I don't, anyway, on one of the long sides because it's going to show up more. Although, on this side, it wouldn't show up as much. Okay? So, I make sure mine is going to join on one of the short sides. Okay? And you can't, this one is stripes. You can't really see where it joins there. So, when I put my score tape on, I'm going to start in the middle of the side where I'm going to start my paper. All right? And then I'm going to go all the way around. Now, I want to make it all one piece so that, oh, well, I don't want to do it that way. I want to line it up along the top, but I want it I want there be to be tape on my corners as well. So that's why I'm keeping it all one piece, lining it up nicely along the top so that there is also tape on those corners. And then you take it to join. Same thing down here. Start on the same side of your box where you're going to start your paper. Go all the way around the bottom. Hi, Brenda! Oh no, Karen. That's terrible. Sorry about that. And I'm going to put one more row. Oh no, I think I'll add the rest, but I will put on the bottom here. Oops. Now, you also want to have tape on either side of each corner. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to have to add more tape or tape on the paper as well. So, you also want to have tape on either side of each corner. I'm not too upset, well, I'm ticked off that I have to record this again, but um, one of these, I want one of these as a <laughs> late Christmas present for Samuel, for his desk in his bedroom. So I gave him an IOU for Christmas because <laughs> I didn't have it ready. So... But he understood that. All right. So here's the side I'm going to start on. You want to make sure you get your paper. If your paper's directional, <laughs> make sure you get it on the right, correct side. So here's my join. So my join is going to start on that side. It's not very visible, so. 
So I'm going to start my tape here. Okay, hold on, come on. It doesn't like to start for some reason. Hold on. There we go. There we go. All right, so let's start the tape here. Oh, no, I find this tape harder to get peeled off, get the backing peeled off than score tape. I don't know if it's just me or what. I never have trouble with. Okay. I know I don't have nails, but I don't usually have trouble. Okay. All right. Get my glue stick ready here. All right. Now, like I did the inside, I'm keeping Okay. Oh no, really? More? We're supposed to have, okay, it was originally on Monday we were supposed to have snow, and now they're saying it's going to be 8 degrees and rain, and we have like three and a half feet of snow. It's going to be a mess because then it's going to go down to minus 14 again Monday night. So it's all going to freeze. Yay! The roads are already a mess from yesterday. Really slippery out there. Oh dear. So excuse me if my head gets in the way for this next part because yeah. I'm just starting from here, trying to get the fold so that it should, if my box is square, which is probably not perfectly square, it should line up here. I'm trying to do the top first. Okay, there we go. That side worked fairly well. There we go. All right. Peel off the next stretch. so cold everything's static clingy oh me too hi dar dar i am recording my streamathon video for the third time because it didn't all record on new year's eve and then when i recorded it on january 1st in the evening for some reason, Ustream only recorded the audio, so I have to do it again. All right, so before you get it down, you want to get this fold going so that it goes straight for you. All right, and it's off a little bit, but not too bad. Oh, wow, Carol. So you're getting... That's what we had the other day. Well, Eileen, yeah, that's... See, that's going to be our problem because people now have two and a half feet of snow on the roof. 
So as long as it rains for long enough for all that snow to melt and it's windy enough to dry the rain um, then before it gets cold, then it'll be a good thing. But if it's not windy and it freezes before the rain dries up, then it's going to be a problem. So, yeah, that's what's going to happen to us on Monday. So it'll be interesting. Very interesting. All right, so I'm getting my fold going here around the corner. And it is off, which is why I'm going to have to use tape on the top. That's, but that's fine. No big deal. Except it's way off. Let's see if I can straighten it out, force it straight at all. Oh, it's going to make it. Hold on. So this corner of the box did not end up very square, obviously. That's all right. I'll, I'll cover that with tape. Okay. All right. Actually, I might have, I'll have a little bit of this left. I might actually tape a little bit at the top. We shall see. All right, so I have to put tape on this side so it'll connect. Ish. Well, I brought home, I went for lunch today with my best friend because we tried, we set up, we were going to go for breakfast on Monday, but we had a snowstorm Sunday night overnight, so we couldn't go. We were going to go yesterday, but we had more snow and freezing cold, so we didn't get out yesterday. So we finally went today. And we went to a local family restaurant here that has yummy, yummy food. And, uh, so it was very good. Very, very good. Now, see, that didn't line up, but that's okay because I'm going to use my cloth tape along the top so no worries we'll hide that okay so now the bottom now this is not going to cover the bottom but I'm going to put a piece over the bottom so that doesn't matter we just want to get it covered over the edges all right so Yes, benefit of being a renter, although they didn't get, they have my path, my walkway shoveled, but they don't have what would be my parking spot, and the parking spot beside me plowed, and I'm not sure, it's the first time they haven't had that done. Um, so I had to go through snow up to my ankles to get out to my friend's car, and it's not like there was anything parked there that they couldn't have, have uh, plowed, because there's no car, I don't have a car. So it wasn't parked there. All right, so once again, I'm cutting a sliver out of each corner, and it's just a sliver triangle, just enough so that it doesn't get bulky there. Just a sliver. 